Hello, today I'm going to walk you through image processing of images taken on the CSR S50 and processed through a free application called Cyril. Also going to uh, compare and contrast uh, images processed on Cyril and stacked on a PC with images stacked on the S50 and processed on my smartphone. Okay, the First thing you need to do is copy the images you want to stack from the CSR S50's internal storage to your computer. Um, I have created a folder for, on my hard drive for uh, CSR images, and I have connected to the CSR S50's network drive over Wi-Fi. Um, if you're not sure how to do this or you haven't done it before, there's actually a tutorial built into the CSTAR app for how to configure this and get the IP address to connect to the storage. Now I'll drill down into the S50 storage and locate the folder for the target I want to get images of, which is NGC 2237. Uh, you'll want the individual subs are saved to these dash subfolders, so you'll want to go into there. Um, these folders have the images that were stacked within the S50. So if I drill in, you'll see that it saved both FIT and JPEG files. Um, JPEG files are compressed versions of the indiv individual captures, whereas FIT images are raw. And they have more data to get more detail in the capturing. So you want to make sure that you only stack the FIT images. So I'm going to filter the folder view to show only the fit files. Now I'm going to go ahead and open the folder on my drive, select all of the fit files, and move them to my hard drive. And go ahead and move them instead of copy, uh, just so I can free up storage on the S50 and not fill it up. All right, I'm not going to stack the images in a free program called Deep Sky Stacker. Um, it is very easy to do, but uh, I remember when I first used it, I did not find the interface uh, terribly intuitive, being unfamiliar with the terminology in the process of stacking, but it's actually very simple. The, the first thing you'll want to do is click in the menu here, Open Picture Files. I'm just going to select them all, click open, and they'll create a file list in this panel at the bottom. If you click any of these images, it will load uh, that individual file in this preview screen. Uh, if it looks like this, it is mostly black and a few of any stars, don't worry about it, that's completely normal. There is a slider up here in the top right that will allow you to uh, stretch the image for previewing. So what you want to do is lower the midpoint by dragging this triangle and sliding it to the left, which will brighten the image. Yeah, brighten it up a little bit more. And then raise the black point by clicking this triangle all the way on the left and sliding it a little bit to the right. That's uh, too much. Uh, about there. You can see even in this individual image, uh, the, you can see the faint outline of the Rosette Nebula. You can quickly flip through your images by clicking one of them then holding down the down uh, arrow key on the keyboard. I like to do that and look for um, airplane and star trails or satellite trails. Let's also go through and look for any images that are um, sh really shaky and need to be possibly removed. Ah, there's an example. So I can just uncheck that image and it won't be included in the stack, uh, messing the stack up. Uh, you'll notice the shading 
and the image changes from image to image. That's because I was actually um, shooting through a thin cloud layer uh, that night, which is why you know, thicker clouds will make it for a lighter image, but block part of the data. Okay, most of these are looking pretty good. Now there is a uh, more complete procedure for stacking. And typically if you're stacking images not from the S50, you would also want to load uh, no, dart files, flat files, offset bias, other calibration frames. The nice thing about the S50 is all of the images are pre-calibrated. And calibration just means that you take other kinds of images to improve the quality of your uh, primary images or to uh, remove different kinds of noise. Now that the images are imported and checked, uh, you can simply do stack checked pictures. Um, you'll see here that's going to complain that uh, I didn't include any calibration frames. Don't worry about that for the S50. Um, it's also showing that the total exposure time on this target was 45 minutes. And I'll simply click OK. And that's it. That's all there is to it. That is your stacked image. So I go back to the source folder. You'll see there is now a file called autosave.tiff. That is the stacked image, as you can see in this preview. Now the next step is to open that image in Cyril and open autosave.tiff. Uh, now again, you'll see that when you first open the image, it is mostly black and maybe a few stars. Again, that is completely normal. Even the screen color is fine. If you want a quick preview of the image, you can click on this uh, menu item right here. It's currently set to linear. Uh, just click auto stretch and it will automatically stretch uh, the image, to give you a preview of what it looks like. This being green like this is completely normal. That is a factor of how color sensors work. So think of a camera sensor as a array of very, very, very tiny solar cells. And as light hits each cell or pixel in the sensor, um, that sensor registers an electrical charge that increases with the amount of light or amount of number of photons that hit it. By default, there, there's no color value in that. So by default, all camera sensors are monochrome. They don't record color. In order to record color, uh, camera sensors have what's called a Bayer matrix sitting on top of them so that each camera pixel actually has a red, green, or blue color filter sitting in front of it. Most Bayer matrixes have two green pixels for every red or blue pixel, meaning that they register a lot more green than they do red or blue. Um, so when you process an image that's been called it debayered to uh, convert it to a color image, it will be more green than uh, it should be. That is very easy to correct in the S50. So click on image processing, then color calibration and photometric color calibration. And you'll want to type in the image into the image parameters, the name of the target you're shooting. So two, two, NGC 2237, uh, click find, click on the search result, then click OK. And it will actually check to make sure that your image actually matches the target you selected. It will convert that to a database of what the correct um, color calibration is for that target. And then it will correct the image based on that. So you can see that 
the actual image data area has been corrected, although the what used to be a black background has now been uh, converted to a green cast, which uh, will crop out. The next thing I'll do is uh, rotate and crop the image. So right click on the image, click rotate and crop. I'm gonna try a rotation of about four degrees. Let's see how that looks. Give it one more degree and another. The exact amount of rotation that you need to give it will depend on how much field rotation is actually in the image. All right, so that ended up being about 7% or seven degrees of rotation. Um, okay with that, and I'll now crop that down. so that I've only got actual image data in the image. Uh, all right. I'm going to shorten the image so I can go wider and get as wide of a field on the nebula as I can because the nebula is actually roughly um, circular, but we're only gonna get a cross section of it in the S50's field of view. Right. So I will apply that. Okay, and with that, it actually has done a restretch of the image because we have altered the histogram of the image um, or the, ex the exposure levels across the image, um, which affects how the auto stretch works. Um, so with that, it looks like we'll actually end up wanting to do, actually, I'm going to crop, do this rotate and crop in stages, get a better idea. For the first pass of rotating crop, um, or of cropping, I'm just going to basically get this entire larger area. Apply that. Okay, so it looks like we're actually gonna deal with a roughly coffin-shaped area of the image um, for our final stack. Uh, that's very inconvenient for framing. Um, we may have to just deal with not having a clean crop um, in order to main, retain some of the image data. So, you know, if I tried to crop this down to where there were no areas of the image that were showing Build rotation artifacts, I'd end up with something probably about like this. Uh, which is not bad, but it's really not, um, it's cutting out so much of the image data. So I think I can go for a more conservative crop. something maybe about uh, like that. And you can also see that, you know, the in this crop, the auto stretch is looking pretty nice. Um, noisy, but you know, nebula is coming through uh, very nicely. So I'm going to, we're start processing, I'm going to go from auto stretch to linear. And it's back to mostly black with a few bright stars from the Rosettes cluster. I am going to go to image processing and do an A-sign transformation to begin stretching. So I want to start moving the stretch factor to the right and adjust the black point up a bit as well. Sort of experiment with the two values until you get a starting point that you're really happy with. 
going to be very careful not to be aggressive with the black point because you'll actually um, clip the image and remove the data that you want um, to have an image, which is the nebula itself. So I always err on the side of too little black point adjustment rather than uh, too much. Okay, I'm gonna stop right about there, I think. Click apply. And now I'll do the rest of the stretching through the histogram transformation. So as the name suggests, this is showing a histogram of the image. And if you're not familiar with photography or image processing, a histogram is basically a graph of the brightness distribution among the pixels of the images. And there will be a line for each of red, green, and blue, which if you want, you can toggle on or off. Um, so basically what this is telling you is that so towards the right of the histogram is, so the left to right axis, axis of the histogram is the, um, brightness value of the pixels. The y-axis is the uh, distribution in that brightness. So you can see that almost all the pixels in this image are within a very narrow range of brightness uh, towards a darker end of the histogram, uh, which is typical after this initial step. So this is, using the histogram transformation is uh, similar to the ASIN transformation, but with sliders. So you'll want to do a process of stretching the image by sliding this midpoint slider to the left, which moves the pixel distribution to the brighter end of the spectrum. Um, it also increases the number of uh, underexposed image pixels, which you'll then want to reduce by raising the black point, sliding it to the right. Always being, always doing this in increments and being very careful not to um, clip the image uh, data of the nebula itself. So for instance, if I apply this over here, you can see that we're actually losing the nebula instead of improving it, even though we're getting a nice black background. Again, I always go for a conservative approach on the black point in these initial steps. So just keep doing incremental steps of stretching and raising the black point. And we'll stop when we reach a point that the image is extremely um, it's getting too noisy. All right, I think we've reached the stretch limit for this uh, data. It's at it's about 46 minutes or 45 minutes of total um, exposure time, which is not uh, a whole lot. So that limits the amount of stretching we can do without introducing uh, too much noise. All right now I'm going to work on uh, just fine tuning that black point and getting it But I think that's as far as I want to push it right now. And now I'll start working on reducing the noise. And there's a couple ways to do the noise reduction in, in Serial. Um, one way is with a noise reduction tool in the image processing menu. Um, and this gives you a few options for denoising. Um, 
I should just is to play around with these and see what gives you the best results um, for your image and what you're looking for. So I run that, you can see that you did a first pass with a decent job of noise reduction. Run it again. Um, okay, I think it's resulting in something that looks blotchy. Um, I'm going to close that and undo that noise reduction. Try the other way, which is median filter. So the kernel size, uh, basically, the higher the kernel size, the more noise reduction or smoothing that it will do. So I'm going to start with uh, 3 by 3. Okay, that's not bad. Though, so I think maybe I, I may have stretched this image more than the data can really support. So I'm going to step back, undo, and undo a stretcher too. Bring the noise level down. That's okay, let's try that. I'm going to readjust the black point without further stretching. Let's try noise reduction. Okay, I think that is a better result. And let's go ahead and take a look at median median filter. I don't like the Noise reduction a little bit better. Um, so you can see the difference. I'm going to do a nine by nine kernel size. You see that really blurred um, the image quite a bit. Um, obviously, that's a bit more than what we want um, for this image. Um, so we'll go ahead and. Okay, maybe five by five though. It's not too bad. Let me compare that again to noise reduction. I think I like that mean filter little better. Um, I'm going to adjust the black point again. Um, that is that was a very quick processing, very few steps. There's obviously a lot more that could be done, but that is not a bad result. Um, especially given that it was only four or five minutes and it was shot through clouds. So obviously if you had you know, a few hours of data on a perfectly clear night, um, you, know, you could get a much better result uh, than this. I also think that um, given the quality of this data, I'm actually going to resize the image and make it smaller. So you go back into image processing, um, go to geometry, and resample. Um, simply enter a percentage of what size you want the image to be compared to the full size. I'm going to go ahead and make it 50%. Uh, and 
and it will I have preserved aspect ratio checked so that it will do 50% on both the X and Y axis. Click apply. Um, don't worry about this. Click process. And that is a pretty nice looking image. Um, certainly good enough to post on Facebook or you know share with your share with your family and friends. Now to save this, um, I will usually do save two copies. So click this little down arrow button, uh, which is uh, export. Um, navigate to the folder that I save it to. Always put it back in the source folder or in a folder above. Um, obviously that is your preference. So what I'll usually do is I'll save off the process TIFF. Um, with the name of the target and just a few details to help me remember how it's processed. So 45 minutes exposure and processed. Uh, click save and now I'll save another copy in the same folder, same file name, but um, save it as a ping, um, which is easier, easier to share, post on Facebook or share around. Since uh, FID is a fairly specialized format and you know most browsers and apps uh, don't support it directly. Well, that's in for TIFF. Um, since you know, ping is a much more commonly supported format, than TIFF, plus it's a, it's a much smaller file. And it's a much smaller file size. And for a very basic processing flow, that's all there is to it. And I definitely encourage you to, you know, experiment with the tools, try different things. Um, you know, don't be afraid to try something. If it doesn't work, undo it, try something else. That's, you know, the best way to learn and improve your processing skills. And, you know, a lot of times you'll stumble across something that gives you a better result than what you were planning to do. Right. I have opened two versions of this data in Photoshop to give a side-by-side -side comparison. The foot on the left was stacked in the S50 and processed using the same techniques I showed in my previous image processing tutorial using smartphone apps. Um, the image on the right, of course, is the image that I just processed using Serial. Um, one of the most striking differences between the two images is the colors. The image stacked in the S50 has you know, a lot of orange and green tints, whereas the image on the right is uh, almost entirely shades of red which is expected when shooting through um, light pollution filter, which I did for this data, which is a, it's a dual neuroband image, which will primarily let the uh, hydrogen alpha wavelengths come through, which are red. Um, I was curious about this, and I did some testing with the same data in Serial, and I've come to the conclusion that it comes down to the color calibration method used for each image. Um, for the image in Serial, I used the photometric color cal calibration, which gives very accurate colors. Um, but if I use a much more um, naive or simple method of calibration, I got colors much more like the image on the left. So that tells me that the C star is in fact not doing 
photometric color calibration, but is doing a very basic calibration. Um, so if you use the images stacked in the S50, you may actually end up with uh, colors that are less accurate than if you stack and process the images yourself. And that's not to say the and it's not to say that the image produced by the S50 um, is bad. I actually like the colors in the image, they're just less accurate. Um, so you may prefer to go with that from an artistic perspective to get more pleasing colors. Um, just know that it is more of a false color image. Another big difference between the two images is the stars and how they came out. So you see that um, you know, so the images on the left, the stars are you know, much brighter and more prominent than uh, the image on the right. And you know, dep depending on the target and your personal preferences, you may prefer um, the stars be more prominent. Um, for a nebula image, again, I prefer, um, I don't like to completely remove stars, um, although you, like you can, but I do prefer um, more subdued stars in a, a nebula image like this. Um, although, of course, if I wanted to enhance the stars and make them more prominent, that could be easily accomplished in processing as well.